Mitov. And the, the topic of his communication would be the studies of the uh, motions of small molecules in porous media like zero yes. lights and how to use relaxation in order to probe these motions. Yes. Thank you very much for this kind introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, I uh, uh, beg your pardon if I not only present new things, but also things which have been published longer time ago. But the, uh, the problem in my presentation is the following. Uh, we have made a lot of work in Leipzig with respect to relation. And this already started with Professor Pfeiffer, the late Professor Pfeiffer. We have the very good conduct between diffusion measurements, relaxation, high resolution, and this type. And you know Professor Kerger, who is a great expert in all problems of diffusion. Uh, but we always observe and find that some problems are still very controversially discussed in the literature. And I would like to give some examples where we have a relatively clear picture, although uh, what I have, this is my personal impression, I have problems to understand some papers in the literature. And so far, I will repeat all, uh, some old things, but I, can, I will also present new uh, results and uh, the topic is to show, first of all, the relaxation. And secondly, I would like to, to show you also that by this mean, we can probe the behavior of uh, small molecules in porous media. And the problem in general is uh, whether the molecules behave as molecules in the park or the molecules behave in a quite different way, like uh, isolated particles. And, and uh, the problem is also under which conditions the volume properties are lost. And this is the background of this presentation. And exclusively, if I, only, I show only one result, which is related to, uh, uh, to chemistry, to structure. Of course, many of you very well know uh, that we used the zeolites, we used other purest material. I will only show this picture in order to show the problems what we have. And of course, we have a great expert in this field, Professor Fressar. Excuse me, please, Chuck, if I repeat stupid things. But you are the great chemist in this field, yes. Uh, the most important problems is, in our case, that we have materials in which we have well-defined uh, openings, well-defined uh, diameters, in, and well-defined uh, structure in a microscopic or same a mesoscopic scale. It means the problem in our studies, we have in most cases well-defined systems, but the systems are characterized, and this is the second point which I look, like to mention only here, by small particles. And the particles can be as small as one uh, micrometer, they can also be, and this depends on the great uh, uh, avail the availability of these materials. They can also as, uh, be as large as 40 micrometer. In this context, because we are in Peters, in in Petersburg, in, uh, I should mention and I should acknowledge that we had an excellent relationship during the time of the GDR and the Soviet Union with the Institute of Silicate Science uh, in Petersburg. And many of the materials came from Professor Sergei Petrovich uh, Stanov. Of course, the late Stanov uh, uh, is, uh, is, is an expert. I do not know whether they have such a great man still in this institute, but I know this is a famous institute in St. Petersburg. And we benefited a lot from the cooperation which is with the people in Petersburg, also with other groups in, in the former Soviet Union who were well trained uh, in the uh, chemistry and in the preparation of material. This is our background, which I cannot mention in all details, but you should know what is the, uh, the, the most important point for us. It means we have well defined systems. These systems include all also different types of, of uh, silica charts of uh, other porous media, and I will not touch this question. The problem if, uh, first is water 
uh, at salt water. So behavior at salt water in porous material. And first of all, we show uh, results which we have found, and this is the older work, uh, a longer time ago, and we have used in these times because we had no experience in this field, the normally uh, uh, available uh, commercial products by the famous De Gussa company in, in, in West Germany at this time. And we used these materials which are well characterized and uh, began the study of uh, the adsorption of water and the origin, of course, is the work of the late Professor of Winkler, who did a lot in this field in the group of Pfeiffer in Leipzig. He was an expert in the relaxation. And now we, we found these measurements and we could not understand the behavior of this, of this relaxation times. And I will show you what is the problem. We have relaxation times which are in the order and magnitude of some million seconds. And even you have restricted water, this order of magnitude is completely wrong. And furthermore, we have no great difference between T1 and T2, and we have a strange temperature dependence. It means we could not understand uh, the behavior of uh, the water molecules. Of course, you find a lot of publications in which you find such curves, but I believe they are completely wrong. And then we, we asked what we can do in order to understand. And we tried uh, as physicists to, to work a little bit uh, as chemists and Occasionally, we had the success to, uh, to grow by ourselves uh, uh, using the techniques which are nowadays used to produce silica plates for the, for the semiconductor industry. And finally, we found a material in which the behavior is totally different. It means we could produce a very, very clean, a very poor, with respect, not to a good structure, but with respect to the iron and other paramagnetic point. And, and this is the first point I would uh, briefly explain. You see, we have a quite different behavior between T1 and uh, T2, and we used uh, partially deuterated water, and we measured uh, over a a sufficient range of temperatures, and we found the dependence of uh, as a HD ratio in these mixtures, and we found also some special behavior of uh, the transverse relaxation time. And this is the starting point, uh, and I now try to explain you what is the pro uh, interesting point. First of all, uh, the absolute values of the relaxation times clearly indicate that we have proton proton interaction. And we could also check this because we measured the relaxation time as a function of the proton tutoring conduct. And by this way, we can simply check whether we have uh, paramagnetic impurities as relaxation center and so on and so on. It means we have measured the relaxation time quite systematically, a lot of work. We applied these techniques also to benzene and other molecules, but I will not speak about this. And the situation is the following. It's a very pure silica. The specific surface area is similar as a, as a, a, a material which can be uh, which achieved uh, by Degussa, for instance, we have uh, the possibility to change uh, the, the filling factor. It means we have here a, a three course of a statistical monolayer. It means we have not a complete filling, but uh, to be uh, more precise in such, such condition, we can never use the famous theory, the adsorption uh, theory by Brunert Emmett and Teller because water is not adsorbing in a layered form because the water forms a quite inhomogeneous shell. Unfortunately, this fact is not observed in many publications. They apply BAD, BED, Brunert, and Teller without knowing that the that the suppositions of the theory are completely lost in this complicated system. It's not the story to speak about this point. I would, would like to mention, to draw your attention also on the, on the following. It means this behavior, say, the water is not homogeneous. It means we have different types of water. This is expected because very, water is a very complicated uh, molecule. And if you change the 
uh, it's a number of molecules, say it's an adsorption, uh, a statistical layers, one or more. So you can even see that as a behavior with respect to the influence of the water uh, bonding, the hydrogen bonding, is quite different. And in this case, we have the following situation. We, hence, we can estimate by these uh, uh, curves the correlation time of the water molecules from this curve. We have different types of water molecules. This is seen uh, if you compare T1 and T2. And we have a very uh, interesting behavior of the transverse relaxation time. It's really relaxation time. And you see, if you increase the temperature, the relaxation time will become shorter. And at some higher temperatures, you have again this uh, behavior. This is a normal behavior you may found if you very carefully work. And the interpretation of this uh, fact is very interesting, and I will show you now. You can study now the different mechanisms. I will not deal, because we have the famous book by Professor Chizik in which all these mechanisms are theoretically explained. I need not to explain you the different relaxation rates. It means proton, proton, dipolar, electro, proton, paramagnetic ion, uh, proton, uh, paramagnetic ion, conduct interaction, and so on. And the question is also, what is the shape of the spectral density function? You find this information in the textbook by Professor Chichik, and therefore I need not to explain this. But you see, if you now apply, you have also to take into account that we have uh, inhomogeneous samples. This is also well known in the literature. And you can have a, a so-called slow exchange, a fast exchange, and you can also have a spatial situation which often occurs in the surface. And the spatial situation uh, which often occurs in the surface, you have nice, you cannot uh, say we have fast or uh, rapid exchange, but you have an intermediate situation, and this intermediate situation is described by this formula. And look at this formula. You have the behavior of the water in the maturity of case. You have also the behavior of water, and you have some exchange rate, uh, and this is an exchange rate which we can clearly address to the exchange between adsorbed water and uh, and uh, hydrogen bonds on the surface. And we can even uh, ex explain what is the mean lifetime of the protons in a water molecule with respect to the jumping in the hydrogen bonds. And this is also a story which is related with, with my cooperation with, with uh, with the colleagues in Moscow. I had some sabbatical year in the group of Professor Korsansky in Moscow. You know him very well, uh, a very famous uh, and very complicated person, I must tell you. And there was a debate also with Professor Shitomirov. And the problem was, what is the real lifetime of the protons in the water molecule? And what is the activation energy? And now the result is quite quite clear from this uh, type of me measurements. We can clearly uh, tell the people what is the lifetime of the protons with respect to the exchange in the hydrogen groups. Because this, depend time, this, this depends of, uh, on temperature is clearly characterized by the fact here we have the reorientation of the water molecules and here we have the influence of the uh, proton exchange in the hydrogen bonds. It means you can clearly tell the people what is the lifetime in this case. Of course, this depends on many things and we can also indicate the uh, correlation time, and now we have the following time scales. So, OH groups in this uh, theory, in this materials, uh, this is silica shell and azobe, is in the range of one milliseconds, but the reorientation, the correlation time, mainly given by the reorientation of the water molecule, is a time of uh, is a time in the range of, two of two 10 to minus 8. And we have also 
weakly absorbed water molecules. We have 10 to minus 10 S correlation type, always the value at room temperature. In the bulk, it just depends on the pH value, but it's well known from the literature. You have a correlation time of two, uh, uh, about 2 10 to minus 12 seconds. We have a very interesting time scale. And now the debate was, uh, what is the mechanism for the tutoring exchange? And you see, we have a very fast reorientation of the water molecules, which is clearly seen from the relactation. But the lifetime of the protons with respect to an exchange in the hydrogen bond is, tend is nearly, nearly five orders of magnitude slower. It means it's not a simple picture, and it's also not related with the reorientation of the molecules. And this is a, a also not related with some uh, uh, excitation phenomena because the activation energy we found for the water molecule is approximately the same as the reorientation time of the water. This is the story, and then we made some theoretical work with Professor Shinomirov in order to explain this fact. But you see, this is a very interesting point, and we neither observed the, form the formation of so called hydronium ions or some H3O. This does not play any role in the dynamics of this at soap water and the exchange of the uh, deuterons or protons uh, also in the adsorbed uh, 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 case. It means a very interesting one, but you see, uh, we find a lot of work in which these details are not observed and they simply start with this with a simple picture which cannot be uh, true. And you see, summarized, we have different types of water molecules. We can directly observe uh, quantitatively the lifetime with respect to the exchange in the hydrogen front, but we can also observe the correlation time for the orientation, and we can even give a very direct measure of the activation energy for the uh, hydro, for the a proton exchange. This is this story which we have found. Of course, this is not very uh, important contribution, but with respect to many publications, it, it always is, is not very correct. Results are repeated. It seems to be necessary to remember, remember this relatively old work and this is the first part I like to present. I present this uh, old results because recently, and I have already preliminary presented the results uh, one year ago or one and a half year ago here. In, no, it was in Poznan, yes. And this is the behavior of water in other type of porous materials. And I would like to explain you the quite different behavior which we have. We study in Leipzig a metal organic framework. You know this story. I have already explained in one of the lectures. You have, uh, you have so-called MOFs. They have a crystalline porous 3D structure. They are used, but not so stable in case of the chemistry. It means the, 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 the technical chemistry. But you know this is a, a framework in which we are similar as in zeolites, internal voids. The diameter is about 10 Austrian. You have a well-defined skeleton. And you have, as, as a speciality, you have in these types of, uh, of these, of these uh, materials, you have so-called carbo-carbo battle wheel. It means you have paired carbo uh, atoms, as you see here. And this carbon atom gives the, gives the origin, I will come back to this, of a spatial uh, behavior and also spatial type of uh, relaxation behavior. Now we have this framework, well-defined, similar as zeolites, but not so stable. And we, of course, we have uh, to observe the pairing mechanism for the electron spins. It means you can have a triplet, a singlet state uh, at the low temperature. And as equal one, it means uh, pairwise uh, cover uh, uh, couple atoms, it means couple pairs, 
uh, and you have a speciality with respect to the sources for the relaxation. But my first point is not to speak about these problems. I will come back to this. I will speak about uh, the following situation. In these materials, as in the case of zeolites, you can have different crystallographic positions, which are uh, strongly different with respect to the indirection energy between adsorbed molecules and these centers. We have a center in the side pockets, in the windows, and so on and so on. And now we have the following. We, um, we performed water adsorption in this spec, remembering our results which we have received a longer time ago. And now you have the following situation. This water is so tightly adsorbed that you cannot find any exchange model. Any exchange. You, if you have an experiment, and this experiment uh, is uh, characterized by this time, you have dehydrated three minutes, uh, one hour, three hours, nine, nine hours, uh, up to 80 hours. We, and we increased only the number of water molecules. This is a, a detailed work with the vacuum technique. It's not important. But what you see, if you are measuring now uh, the MIS spectra of these samples, I will not speak about the complicated conditions to rotate the samples in a very defin defined adsorption state. This is checked. This is the work of Professor Freude. But the origin of this work came from Novosibirsk. This was must in the late master. He developed this technique together with Olka Lavina in the group, and they made the rotating sample. And this is a very fine work. We applied these techniques in Leipzig too, and we could now, under defined conditions, measure the behavior of the adsorbed volume noise. So you see, in the beginning, we have a certain line, and this line, uh, of course, is left, but it's superimposed by another type of a resonance line, and after some time, you, felt you find a third time, uh, a third type of water molecule. This means the water molecules are tightly adsorbed. They cannot move. They cannot exchange. But we step by step, we fill up the most energetical point, then the less the intermediate, and then the less energetical point. And what we have is such a complicated picture. It means we have no exchange phenomena of water in this type. Of course, you cannot play an infinite time with the water because the water will, uh, after some time, destroy the structure. But this is another story. But you can make these measurements. And you see, we have very well defined adsorption system and no uh, motion. And now we have shown you uh, with, with a little bit more more complicated to explain you the different type of interaction and the number of molecules which are uh, necessary in order to fill up these types. You see, uh, we can clearly determine the number of water molecules, and we can also explain uh, how many water molecules are in direction with each cover, and so on. And finally, you have the influence of the free Order. Summary of this point, we have systems in which we have no exchange phenomena and we have long time uh, water uptake studies which confirm this point. I explain this uh, because, of course, uh, the chemical shifts are determined by the interaction with the couple sites with superfine interaction, but I cannot go in more detail. The origin of this previous work with water was another origin. We tried to apply this materials in order to make the separation of CO2, CO2. And, and other types. And these materials are particularly suitable to separate the, 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 the different carbon, uh, carbon oxides, uh, carbon monoxide, and this, cough, this is of very great interest for um, environmental science because you can have a cell, very strong selective absorption of this very uh, complicated and dangerous cases. But this is not the background of my work. We, we 
try to understand the behavior of this adsorbed molecule and to find out what are the physical reasons for the different adsorption behavior. And you see the different reasons this will be the result of this measure is given by the fact that CO and CO2 have a different adsorption behavior because if we absorb CO2, then the adsorption leads to a strong deformation of the CO2 molecule and you have no more this well-known geometry, but this is deformed. And this is a a physical reason for the spatial properties of these molecules if you adsorb these molecules in these types of uh, interface lines. And of course, this is of a great practical interest. And you see the strong adsorption of water, which leads to very fixed molecules, is also reflected in very typical interaction between CO and CO2 and the active sites in the zeolite. This is, I mean, the main results. And at this point, I could already stop. But I try now to understand in a deeper sense what is really going on in systems. And this is the reason why we have used uh, traditional techniques. We simply measured uh, the uh, temperature the temperature depends of the spectra, and you see this is a broad range coming from 10k until uh, several hundred of k, and we have now a cystic medical variation, and this is the aim of these pictures in order to show what happens. Solid, uh, rigid CO, uh, this is in comparison with literature data, and then different types, more weakly adsorbed CO, you see the mobile and the solid phase. And now if you, uh, uh, if you see, we have some reorientation processes. And if you uh, increase the temperature, you see the maturity of the molecules becomes mobile, still absorbed, and you can also find at very high temperature the behavior of the molecule in the gaze phase. It means you have a quite interesting sequence of spectra uh, over a long range of temperature in order to understand uh, the, the different types of CO. And now we repeated this with the behavior of CO2 uh, and we also tried to understand the chemical shift. This I will omit, this detailed discussion. This chemical shift changes is not only related with the mobility of the CO and CO2 molecules, it's also related with the fact that we have increasing population of the paramagnetic S equal one state it means the triplet state of the electrons, and this causes additional interaction. I mention this because it could be dangerous if we only observe at the spectra and do not understand the physical background. It means to be carefully, it is not interesting for you here and for me not, to, to have the influence of the paired and unpaired uh, uh, sites because the population of this different electronic state is changing as a function of temperature. Low temperature, we have no interaction because the molecules cannot move to the sites. And then we have, as is well known from the literature, is the normal EPR stuff. You have uh, the ground and the triplet state. You can even estimate the relative fractions. This is shown here. And you can use this in information in order to show what happens with the state of the molecules. It means you can show no contact with paramagnetic sites. We can uh, use the increasing population. We can have the influence uh, uh, due to exchange dynamics. And of course, we have a different scenario for the uh, adsorbed a bait molecule. Uh, first of all, I showed you the interaction of water. This is a very stable, fixed situation. If we have CO interaction, we have no 
uh, we have not only uh, well fixed uh, types, we have uh, slow exchange dynamics. It's seen in the spectra. This is a Dewey spectra you find in each textbook of NMR. And then we have an exchange of CO molecule between uh, the uh, internal voids and uh, the external place. And this is a problem now to understand in which way we can apply these materials in order to have practical questions. It means to make a separation of the molecules from the gas phase, to separate and to have a selective interaction. And the problem in this case was to understand the local motion of this adsorbed species. And this is again the application of the standard uh, relaxation technique described in the book uh, by Chizik and his co-workers. And it's only the application of the well-known theory. It's not this, nothing particular. But it's interesting to understand the d different behavior within these different molecules in order to have a, a, a meaning or an imagination of the mechanism. We have measured the relaxation time over wide range of temperature, you see this uh, range of measurement was from about 100, uh, K, uh, 300 Ks or 400 Ks, you see here the temperature, t t uh, the reciproc temperature until t uh, 30, it means this is about, uh, about uh, 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 30 degree 30 degree Kelvin, we have measured the relaxation time. And this is not so interesting, but only to be mentioned. At 300 megahertz, and on the wonderful Bureau 17.6 Tesla machine in the right pole we have, and fortunately we have in Leipzig, thanks to the good cooperation of the Leipzig people with colleagues from Froger. And we could measure also the temperature, the, the frequency depends. And now we try to understand uh, the behavior of CO2 and CO with respect to the relaxation. Again, it's uh, from the standard textbooks. We have checked all the possible interactions. If you look to the famous uh, book. And uh, the final problem is due to the behavior of this um, unpaired electron and paired electrons due to the copper pairs, this has already been checked by using other MOFs in which we have no copper. We replaced MOF as a copper by, by calcium, by cadmium and other in order to see the difference. Finally, we understood the relaxation mechanism very well and uh, on this basis, we could now try to understand the spectral density. And you see, we have made the measurement uh, over very, over uh, different, with different spectrometers over a larger range of temperature and checked the behavior. The final result of this is of this work, it's like a diploma work in physics to make this measurement. There's nothing particular, it's a routine measurement, but the problem of the interpretation is not so simple. And now I will, will show you now what is the real problem in the interpretation. I give you some formula which is well known from the literature. This has been published in the, in the late 50s. This is a famous Tory Motel, a famous American scientist, and he made a first proposal in which he applied the so-called letting model of motion to the relaxation. It means the following. You have a letting, a lattice motor, you have different crystallographic sites, and you have molecules which are adsorbed at certain places. Lattice model, model means you have a certain lifetime of the molecule at a certain time, and then you have a flight time of the molecule which is relatively short with respect to the lifetime. This is well known. This in the literature, and normally it's forgotten because always they are using the diffusion model. It means the Debye like diffusion model, which cannot apply to this chump like motion, which is therefore called a lattice model. The simple answer is the following you have in this model a spectral density function which contains only one correlation time. 
a single correlation time, and this is not expected because in the Debye model, you have a distribution of correlation times because the molecules which are moving in diffusional steps, which are close to, the, to, to each other, they have a long time, a, a short time, and the other which are far, they need a long time in order to make this certain reorientation. This is known from the Debye model, which is well known in the, in the literature. The conclusion, you have a relaxation function with a single correlation time. The single correlation time here has a very uh, de defined uh, uh, meaning. This correlation time is half of the lifetime uh, of a molecule at a lattice point. It means the molecule sits, you have a lifetime, say, 10 micro microseconds, and half of the lifetime is uh, the correlation time, is the micro microscopic correlation time for this mechanism. We have this applied, of course, this is a, a PPP formula, Pronauer, um, uh, Blomberg, Börsel, Bound, and you can apply these techniques also to the paramagnetic relaxation. And the meaning of this correlation time, I told you, is related with the jump length microscopic channeling, and the diffusion coefficient. And this has been checked. This is not only what I have to mention. We had a cooperation with your Kager, and we checked measuring the diffusion coefficient, measuring the correlation time, in order to understand why this model is valid also in a microscopic way. And we could check the diffusion coefficient is related with this means jump length, means squared jump length, assuming a Gaussian process. Of course, it's a complicated story. But we can clearly estimate the mean lifetime, relate with the diffusion coefficient, and find an information about the mean jump length. And this mean jump length should be, if, it, if this model is correct, larger. Then, then, the, then the closest distance between the molecules. I mean, this mean jump length should be related to the lattice diffusion, the lattice dimension. It means this, this can be checked by X-ray scattering. Finally, we have uh, used this, molecule, this model, and now we have a clear uh, picture. Uh, the molecules are adsorbed at certain at certain at so, uh, at so pl uh, places. The molecules uh, do not uh, perform a, a diffusion-like, it means a Debye-like motion, but a lattice diffusion model, and the lifetime can be directly used in order to control the behavior with the diffusion constant. And now the initial question I have with you, the question was, what is the difference between CO and CO2, the answer is uh, CO is much more mobile as CO2, and the re microscopic reason is that the molecules are fixed at a place, CO2, but in this type, the molecules of CO2 are also a little bit deformed. It means the angle is not 180 degrees, but is smaller. And this causes, to, this gives the origin for different interaction mechanisms. It means it's quite clear, only in this case, of course, this work is going on, and the kind people. Uh, in Leipzig are also using other types of MOFs in order to make uh, extended information in this case. It's clear what is the physical reason, and I would uh, present this example in order to show how a carefully analysis of the relaxation time with respect to other information can lead uh, to a very clear picture of the microbe behavior. I have a third example. And I will uh, only uh, briefly mention what is the problem. Uh, the problem is that we used, and this is similar as the problem we have here, but as the problem which we have here is to use a molecule uh, which is small enough in order to be studied in our system, but uh, which is also uh, known as a typical molecule in which the end action between the molecules play a very dominant role in the behavior of these molecules in the volume phase. 
briefly spoken, these molecules shows, show a class-like behavior. It means they have strongly interactions between the dipoles in this, in this, in this uh, samples, and this strong interaction leads to so-called class-like uh, Interaction. It means we have a molecule which is adsorbed, and the motion of this molecule cannot be explained in terms of the Arrhenius formula. Uh, you know, this is a, a famous theory in the, in the people who are dealing with this class like behavior and with uh, dielectric measurements that in this case you have a spatial temperature dependence and the theoretical background, you know, of course, is the so called focal fulcher Taman uh, formula in which you, instead of the Arrhenius curve, have some strange temperature dependence which is given by some exponents uh, of the temperature. This is a physical background. And the question in our case was, can we observe in case of adsorbed molecules really volume properties? It means in this case a clear class forming property. Or have, do we have in situation where the molecule molecule interaction is interrupted is no more present because the interaction of the volume the molecules with the surface of the CLI is much stronger this is an old question which is typical for each adsorption measure and now I would try I would like to show you briefly what happens again we have uh, this spatial type this is ethylene glycol we have this, uh, this typical hydrogen bond, and this hydrogen bonding interaction leads to this spatial behavior. Here we have a core, it means the cylindrical size of this molecule, which is uh, three, about four uh, onstrom. I tell this value because this value is comparable with the sites, for instance, from some spatial zeolites like sodalites. We have here channels with 6.6. .6. We have sodium X, you know. We have super cage diameters. This is here. At 12, we have the window openings. This is, this is inside the opening, but the window openings is here. is about 7. And we have also, we have also a well-defined structure. It means we have used a lot of these materials and try to understand understands the behavior of acetylene glycol. An important problem in this measurement is to have a very precise estimation of the temperature of the sample. Of course, if you are a specialist uh, who likes to take this phase transition, the most important point is to have a very defined temperature with accuracy of 0.5 or even less K. It means we have to know the temperature and not the temperature of the sample in the spectrometer. Each uh, experimentalist knows that the temperature in the probe head may be quite different from the real temperature on the plate. But in this case, we have to be extremely careful. The simple answer is the following. The chemical shift of the OH group is used as a temperature etalon, it means you can use the resonance position of this OH group as a measure of temperature. This is well known in the literature, and a carefully working chemist knows this. This is like a fundamental knowledge in their work. They know simply if you need accurate measurements, you have to use chemical shift, even OH group, or you have the, the other materials which are carefully uh, to, to be related with the temperature. This is only uh, um, information besides. And now you see this is this temperature depends of this chemical shift. So OH group stays at a certain position. This is a technical background. And now we have used a, a, a very a great variation of the uh, or loading. It means we have, uh, in terms of data, 0.8, it means about 10% of the voids are filled with the molecule. We have 100%, and we have also more molecules than uh, suitable for uh, the filling of a large cavity. It means we have measured a lot of different samples, and you see the spectra are quite different. At low temperature, 
you have isolated molecules like here, and you have molecules which are strongly bound. And you see this, this is increased. You have a strong shift in terms and so on. And you see we have a low point, we have overloaded. And the problem is, do we find a so-called liquid phase behavior? At the time is over, I will come to the conclusion. And uh, we have studied the relaxation. This is not very important now in this context, because we have again checked what is the mechanism for the reorientation of the jump-like motion. And uh, the result and the re uh, conclusion is the following. We have used uh, all techniques which are available in order to characterize the motional state of these molecules. And finally, also use the techniques which has been uh, developed by Professor Plümisch. This is a, is a stepwise reorientation of the molecules. This is a famous work of him. I will not uh, mention this in more detail. We have measured the temperature domain, but look at the following. We checked the correlation time. In this case, it looks like uh, Arrhenius, uh, uh, excuse me, please. In Arrhenius-like behavior, we checked it with a caloric, calorimetric uh, class transition temperature in uh, uh, as a volume phase. And we have now compared, and this is a, a very complex story, with very uh, detailed measurements of dielectric relaxation. Uh, you see these are the typical curves which we have measured in order to see whether we can uh, Ah, uh, understand the different motional types. You see the different maximum, maxima, and the different behavior over a wide range of temperature, uh, a frequency from about one gigahertz to about uh, uh, one third of an hertz. This is the work together with uh, Professor Kramer in Leipzig, who is very well trained in this field. And the result is the following. We have now compared the behavior. We have um, arrangers like behavior, of course, of different uh, order of magnitude. And we have also checked the so-called transition from the arrangers behavior. It means the transition to the class behavior, the so-called focal fulcher class-like behavior. And the result of these studies are the following. We have use different uh, materials, sodalites, it means different materials in which the size of the internal volumes is changed. And now I will come to the conclusion. Uh, if I compare now the different types, we have the following. We have sodalite, it means the internal void is point uh, uh, 2.8 nanometers, 2.8 Einstein, only one molecule is inside a cage, isolated molecules. We have silica lights, you see the dimensions, this is well known from the specialist, 0 0.5, 0 0.3, Einstein, you have a several molecules, you have zeolite zeolite beta, another type of zeolites, well known for the chemist. You have 7.6, you see several molecules, and you have also so-called ALPO zeolites, which are very useful for the catalysis. Jacques Fresson knows better than myself. Uh, they, they have long-chain molecules, and you can have a, long, a large number of molecules. The result of these measurements uh, with respect to the class state is the following. If you have uh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, this is my last minute. If you have isolated molecules, you have no interaction with the molecules, you have no class transition. Of course, it's a primitive answer, but we can check it definitely. The behavior of the molecules is arrangeous like. Very simple question, normal activated process. If we increase the number, we have a step by step, and it depends on the dimensions of the internal voids. You have a transition from the behavior of a really isolated molecule to some collective motion of the molecules, which 
if you have certain theolites, and I will not show you the other systems because the time is running, and then you have a superposition of the local uh, interaction of the molecules with some active points, see the water results which I have printed, and the collective motion, it means the mutual uh, collisions of the molecules, which finally leads to molecule-molecule interaction, which is now reflected in a so-called class-like behavior. It means the activation of the molecules is no more described by arrangers like uh, but it should be a very complicated uh, dependence of the reorientation time, the correlation time of uh, temperatures. The final warning, if you are studying relaxation and you have only a range, uh, say, of, of 50 degrees centigrade and you like to estimate uh, activation energy, it's in most cases awful. You cannot estimate the behavior if you have not very carefully studied the physical and chemical background. And only in this case, you may have the wonderful approximation which, we ha which has been proposed by, by Arrhenius. Uh, but very mild, yes, thank you very much. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much, Professor Michael, for the wonderful talk, and the talk is open for discussion. Well, I come back to the silica. Yes. Um, okay, you have a mixture of heavy water yes. and water molecule. Yes. But especially when you have, and you have adsorption. Yeah. And especially if the adsorption is not negligible, you should have a mixture an yes. exchange yes. between hydrogen yes. and the yes. 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 And finally, a mixture of heavy water and HOD molecules. Yes. yes. And this, this is doesn't perturb your... Uh... Yes. It, it can be seen because the, the absolute value of the relaxation time depends on the ratio of H2O to T2O, HDO. It means this is well known. And this is a very interesting question because if you have paramagnetic ions, the relaxation time will be independent of the HD ratio. And this is our control, a very clear control, to say if we have proton-proton or proton deuteron interaction and interaction with paramagnetic side. This is a background I did not mention. But this is well known. Of course, the equilibrium, HD equilibrium, which is well known from the, for the chemist, is a little bit changed. It means the, the in equilibrium constant differs a little bit from the uh, pure volume if you have absorbed. But this is clear because the equilibrium is a complicated exchange phenomenon. And it depends on the energy you have here. Yeah. Yes? More questions, please. First. 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 After you. Uh, sir? It's my question now. Uh, thank you very much for uh, excellent presentation where you show the possibility of relaxation analysis. Yes. And uh, I have enjoyed uh, to hear you. Uh, first time I was enjoyed when I saw the Professor Pfeiffer uh, review. Uh, you show some correlation time estimations, and you estimate uh, the uh, low correlation time uh, about 10 minus 3. How you can uh, feel it by NMR? Yes, you can only see this. This is not a real correlation time. It's the lifetime of the molecule, in the case of water, with respect to the exchange via the hydrogen. Yes, you see, I yes. understand. And this can be clearly seen from the temperature. Uh, some uh, of the, of the, uh, proposal have, about exchange. Yes, you have an exchange, and you can clearly change the temperature. And if you have a lowering of the... Of the yes, uh, I see. The, 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 it's, it's clearly not related with correlation time because normally the correlation time will become la sh shorter if you increase the temperature, but in this case the influence becomes stronger due to the spatial behavior of this exchange time. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. I have a very short uh, and common question. I will answer very short, yeah. uh, Mr. Chairman, excuse me, please. <laughs> 
my own question. My, my chairman. <laughs> uh, I, I believe that uh, dielectric relaxation is uh, more difficult to interpret, yes. especially in details. Yes. What is your opinion? Yes, it's the same. Uh, of course, I could not report about this if I had not the background of Professor Friedrich Krämer, who came from the Max Planck Institute in Mainz. He had a very strong experience uh, uh, with respect to dielectric analysis. And he was able to, to make an a, a experimental basis from some millihertz until my uh, gigahertz. And this was the background. But finally, we had have, in order to have a physical picture, we have at some point to, to compare this, this measurement with a magnetic relaxation. Because in case of magnetic spin, also spin relaxation, you have a clear physical picture. And this clear picture is only related with the spins and with, with the local surrounding. We had this discussion this morning, which is given by R2 minus 6 dependence. But in the case of the like, you have a long a long standing and extended interaction, it's always difficult. This is my experience. And therefore, we only, uh, because we are not specialists, but we have compared it with the NMR, and we speak only about those processes which we certainly understood in terms of NMR. And this is an old debate, of course, you know from the book of Andrew, uh, from, 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 um, from Abraham, this is a dielectric, it's a deep, it's a deep, it's a deep, it's a, the relationship that the nuclear spin correlation times should be three times or a third time of the uh, dielectric relaxation time. This is in principle true. If, uh, if, the, if the Debye model works, but the Debye model is a very intelligent model in the 30s, but it only t is a, a re really great simplification. It's all debate, yes. So oh, yes. So I'm Excuse going me, to chairman. maybe abuse my privilege of being a chairman and ask one more question. Yes. Uh, the first portion of your talk, when you talked about the water uh, absorption, uh, mm. I noticed that you had two different states, strongly yes. absorbed and weakly absorbed. Yes. Is this really a minimalistic model? Can you, you know, explain your yes. data by assuming there yes. is only a single state? Mm. And just a little follow-up, I noticed that you use the exchange equation, which I think is, might be called like Swift equation, yes. and it's yes, good yes, for yes, intermediate. Yes, yes exchange, but you sample a considerable range in temperature. So is it still valid or do you need like a, a yes, more general Yes, you are probably, I, I know it also the background of this, of your question, because in bi biological materials, you have also a lot of water. And I think in our case, is some in a, in a certain sense, a simplified model. It means water can have also very, uh, as, uh, very, as a difficult, uh, very difficult states. It means this, this is the most simple approach, which in our case is in a certain aspect uh, valid. But if you have biological, and we have a good cooperation with, we had with the late Professor Arnold in, in, in Leipzig, in the Max Planck, in the biophysical, medical physics, this is much more complicated. And they tried also to compare this with, 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 uh, with tomography. But this is a quite difficult story. The most simple model in our case tells us the problems, but in most cases you have different intermediate types of water. It depends simply on the, on the, on the number of water quality, which are interacting, yes. It means uh, it's a surrounding of, a, of, say, of some biological problem. If you have a lot of water molecules, it's a very, very complex story. But in, in the principle, the first, the first step that we have, in any case, more than one type, this is true. But how many types, and this is now the answer to your question, is this indefinite? Is that it depends on the problem. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much, Dieter. Yes, it was the last question. Let's thank you for this. Thank you.